And we are real live, Big Pete. Let me just set this up here. So you could greet our guests as they stroll in. Come on. Welcome, everybody <laughs> that's joining right now. We are uh, going live. Very, very shortly, we will start the podcast. But right now, we are just waiting for everybody to join in. We're going live on a Tuesday this week. I know it's a day behind, but we're yeah, getting on a Tuesday. Are you ready, man? Let's get rolling and start. Let's do it. What's up, guys? New York Muscle Radio, episode number two, no, 100, man. Episode number 201. How long does it take to lose muscle after a lay ah, after a lay off? Jesus, shed the maybe we should again, maybe we should restart this. Yeah, man. You know what threw me off? Episode two hundred one. Yeah, yeah. Three I know, man. It's like after um after the you know every time the year changes, you're like it's two thousand sixteen. No, wait, no, it's two thousand seventeen for like a a good two weeks before you get used to it. I know. Are you ready? Let's do it. What's up, guys? New York Muscle Radio, episode number two hundred and one. How long does it take to lose muscle after a layoff? So maybe an injury. Or you're going on vacation, or you just want to take time off. Well, if you did that, what would happen to all your gains? Throughout our journey, we've, o- we've always thought if we missed just one workout, we would lose everything. On today's episode, we're going to explain to you why it's important to why it's hard to lose real muscle. Of course, you should try to avoid taking time off, but you have to learn what to do to keep those gains. If you're a new listener, welcome to the best muscle building, fat burning, no BS fitness show on the planet. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right away so you don't miss a beat. And guys, as a you know brand new person listening to this, you can pick up a free 12-week training program. Head on over to NewYorkMuscleRadio.com slash get jacked for your free 12-week training program. It's your host, Anthony Bavalacqua, alongside my co-host, Big Pikachu. And what's up there, big guy? Man, I just uh just finished eating dinner, so I'm in a good mood right now. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. I was craving pizza today. So when I uh, had some free time, I made a bunch of macro-friendly pizzas. I ended up making three of them and eating three all of them. So I ate all three, pizza. man, all three. But it nice. fit the macros, and that's, uh, that's, that's what matters. What kind of pizza was it? I've been making a lot of uh, flatbread pizzas, so I'm not using the thick crust that I used to use a lot. Um, I'm doing like the I'm using the lavish bread, so it's flat. Um, it's uh, it's like what is it about 30, 30 carbs each one. Oh, that's so, like, like fake pizza. Yeah, so three of them. It's like if you ever go and get like a bar pie, you know, that's that flat, flat pizza. Mm-hmm. I've been enjoying that more than thick crust pizza, but you know, as a uh, as my taste buds change, I might go back to the thick crust. But there's never a bad time for pizza, and any pizza is good as long as it's not uh, fake pizza like Domino's. That that doesn't count. You used to watch Ninja Turtles as a kid, man. Hell yeah, man! And every time I did it, I'd have to I'd crave pizza, man. Yeah, I would even want anchovies on my pizza, even though I don't I don't like anchovies. <laughs> uh, ninja pizza. You remember that when they talk about the ninja pizza? Pizza yeah. that vanished quickly without trace. <laughs> what, what does he I say? When, what does he say when the pizza's late? Uh, I don't mean once I... said forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price <laughs> for a <laughs> late pizza. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. It's been such a long time I've watched that movie, but um, he passes the sewer, the pizza down the drain. <laughs> down here, they pass it to him. I forget how much they charge for the pizza at the time. Do you remember? Oh, that I don't know. That's a good question, though. I can only imagine. Don't sleep on Domino's. I actually like Domino's. Do you ever have Domino's, man? Yeah, but I, nah, I don't. I don't like Domino's. I like Pizza Hut actually better than Domino's. Yeah, Pizza Hut's good. Domino's good. Do you ever have Papa John's? I like Papa. I've John's. I've actually never had Papa John's before. Really, it's pretty good never. actually. They have like uh, more heard. exotic pizzas. Yeah, like more like things on it. Like they have the so many different types of flavors. Their pizza's actually really good. Actually, I, fun I had on my big bulk. I used to eat that like religiously. <laughs> That sounds about right. <laughs> I had uh, I had blazed pizza the other day, which was excellent, man. Yeah, you told me about that a while ago, and uh, we're going to get this whole rant about pizza. But yeah. yeah, I never had it before. Hey, listen, we already got so much interaction from our listeners because we're talking about pizza, man. Ninja pizza. So Rebecca says, so if you eat too many carbs or protein at one time, does the overflow uh, not go to fat storage? 
So, well, basically, I mean, we, we talk about this a lot. On, on Sorry, I thought this question was about really. pizza. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, this kind of related to pizza. I mean, I, I did just say I had three slices or three pizzas. They're not slices, but whatever. Um, no, so basically with, with fat storage and fat burning, and I always say this, throughout a 24-hour period, your body is either burning fat or storing it all different times during the day. It's that net at the end of the day that counts. So let's say that you eat. 6,000 calories in one meal. Just something outrageous like that. Yeah, your body's going to store some of those calories as fat because you're not burning that many calories during that meal. But now what happens? Let's say you don't eat anything else the rest of the day. The rest of the day, your body's running off of those calories. It's running off of glucose, glycogen, whatever you have stored. Eventually, if you don't eat, your body's going to have to start burning some of those calories and start burning some fat for energy. So it's all about that balance. Obviously, that's an extreme scenario. You're not going to eat 6,000 calories and not eat the rest of the day or not eat for a couple of days, whatever. But even if you make it a smaller amount, let's say you eat 1,000 calories in one meal. If you ate 1,000 calories for the whole day, you'd be in a deficit. But at that one meal, you might actually store some of it as fat throughout the rest of the day. You're going to end up in a deficit at some point where your body is going to start burning body fat. So Burning or storing fat in one meal, don't really worry about that. That's why you got to worry about the 24-hour period. Yeah, I agree, man. You know, a lot of people think that it's just if you eat certain foods or whatnot, that that's what's going to, you know, make you gain and hold, and that's not the case, like you said. But I actually found the the quote from the Ninja Turtles. So I'll play it quick for everyone. If, it, if my phone plays, I can't wait to get my new phone. Hold on, let's see. Major League butt kicking is back in town. Oh, that is the most quoted lines. Come on, it's killing me. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I got to pull it up. Ah, it was it. Damn it. So, yeah, and you know, in short, your body's always storing fat or burning it. So if you have one meal, like I, it's possible I just stored some fat from that meal. But throughout the course of the day, I'll probably most likely still be about maintenance, maybe even in a deficit based on what I ate today. So I'm not worried about it. I got it, actually. Here you go. How you doing? Hi. Nice night. Mm-hmm. Pizza dudes got thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. Pizza dudes got thirty seconds. Now the guy's pulling up. <laughs> He's looking for it. Time's up. Three bucks off. I just, I'm curious how much he charges for the pizza. Hold on. You're standing on it, dude. <laughs> yeah, one twenty-two. One twenty-two and an eight. One twenty-two and an eight. Terrific. Where the heck is one twenty-two and an eight? You're standing on it, dude. <laughs> Just slip it down here. He's giving them like signals through the hole. Oh, it's a ten bucks. It's ten bucks, I think. You give me that. Yeah, it's ten bucks. Hey, this is a ten. That's 13. You're two minutes late, dude. Ah, come on. I couldn't find a place. <laughs> Wise man say, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. <laughs> dude, 10 bucks. That was in the 90s for pizza. What is it for a pie now? Oh, dude, that's I don't even know, man. Yeah, I don't even know. You're not paying 10 bucks, though. That's for sure. Yeah, no way. 10 bucks in the 90s. I you're think buying, that's kind of you're paying 10 bucks for the soda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially in New York. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we actually had a client come down to New York this weekend, and we, like, gave her command to go and have New York pizza. Did she ever end up getting New York pizza? I, I don't know. Did. I don't know. I so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, guys, we have a special announcement. Our Transformation Group Coaching Program is now live. So our Transformation Group Coaching Program specializes in putting like-minded people together to help support each other during their fitness journey. Our group coaching program is perfect for someone who is interested in working with us but can't afford the full price. Our group coaching program now has two different groups, uh, one for those who want to gain muscle and one for those who want to burn fat. You will receive a customized diet and training program, and yes, just because it's a group setting doesn't mean your program will not be tailored 100% toward you. You're going to get a customized cardio protocol as well as 24-7 support from us and your group mates. Over the past groups, many friendships and bonds have been made. So join a group of elite winners and sign up today for only 150 bucks. So that's right, three months of working with the best in the industry for only 150 bucks. But hurry and act now because we can only take on a limited amount of clients due to demand. 
And also for an extra 99 bucks, you can get a huge supplement bonus from us that will aid in your goal. So head on over to newyorkmuscleradio.com slash transformation to get started. And guys, I'm not even kidding. We, we have to close it at a certain amount because we need our group small. I think we had like 16 in the last group. So uh, we want to make sure we keep them that size because I can't believe the friendships that were grown from there, the camaraderie. It was awesome. It was really, really cool to see. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm really pumped for this next one because, like you said, you know, the transformations that came out of there alone are just awesome. I mean, people really, you know, when you put in the work, it's so true. When you put yourself in the right environment and when you put in the work, you're going to get crazy results. And that's why I really like this group training because the environment is just set up for you. Because if you go in that group and your goal is fat loss or if it's muscle gain, let's say you're going in there and you're trying to burn fat, your group is not going to let you just fall off like that. You know what I mean? When you have the right people with you and everybody's goal is to do the same thing, everybody's looking to burn fat and you say, listen, you know, I had a, I've had a tough week, you know, I'm starting to stress it a little bit. Everybody in that group will get you back on track because you're all in this together. You know, every time I'm with somebody who's, you know, going after the same goals as me, it makes me reach my goals much faster because we're all in it together, you know? So it's, it's the support system that really makes this work. And uh, like I said, I'm really, you know, I'm pumped for this one because of how great the last one turned out. And the, the summer shred group is finishing up right now. We've got some crazy before and afters coming out of that. So this one, you know, we're going to yeah. take it up even a notch from there. Yeah, we just need to make sure that, you know, the reason why we're making it sound like a commercial and important because it, it's, again, we got to close it down in a certain amount of people. So we want to get everyone who, because we got so many messages last time for people that wanted yeah. to sign up, but it was too late. So don't be too late. Don't miss out. And uh, hopefully my co-host actually listened to me and put a ticker on the website like I asked him to. So it counts down how many minutes are left. Did you put that on yet? It's not up there yet. Oh, uh, okay, good. But, then, but, but guys, it'd be cool, got, it'd be cool if people actually went to the site and see. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I can't guarantee anything, but let's <laughs> <laughs> we, we can, you know, we can hope that it'll be up there. Yeah, exactly. So Rebecca says, um, I love being part of the group over the spring. It's so great to connect in such a small private group. We kept each other accountable and we understood each other's struggles. Awesome accountability. I highly recommend it. I didn't, that's right up on the screen. You guys can see that for those watching this live. So I'm not just uh, saying that. That's proof in the pudding right there. So again, that was a, such a good program. And again, we're offering it to you guys. So don't forget NewYorkMuscleRadio.com slash transformation. Get on there. Sign up for it. And again, we're... Uh, we're doing bonuses with it as well. So if you choose the muscle building group, you could choose the bonus for that and you get a whole bunch of stuff toward muscle building. And if you're doing fat loss, get the same bunch of bonuses toward the fat loss stuff. So highly recommended, especially if you want to work with a coach and unsure, this is a cheap, easy way to do it. I would definitely recommend it. Right, right, Pete? You there? Yeah, sorry. In the meantime, uh, I, I got uh, my furry friend over here jumped up on my lap, so I got distracted. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I said, really pumped for it, and you guys got to jump on it now because the uh, program's going to start in about two weeks, and we have to close it out because we have to get everybody's plans over to them. And uh, once it starts, the whole group just starts moving. So you're going to be left behind if you don't sign up ahead of time. Yeah, agreed, man. So uh, before we get rolling, man, what's new with you? I feel like I haven't uh, talked anything fitness. Fitness with me, nothing uh, extremely new. I'm just kind of doing my thing right now, and I'm uh, kind of in maintenance mode, which is cool. It's, I haven't been in this uh, in this mode for a while, and I'm kind of enjoying it, to be honest with you, because uh, for me, if I don't have a set goal, like right now, your goal is strictly powerlifting. You're trying to get in the best uh, – you're trying to get your total up the, the highest it can for nationals for me right now. My goals, um, you know, they change over time. And right now, just, <laughs> they change with the weather. They change with the weather. You know, this <laughs> month is one thing. The next month is another thing, you know. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So if I have a goal right now to either burn fat or build muscle, that'll be my next uh, my next goal. But right now, like I said, I'm kind of just in maintenance mode. It's cool because I got other stuff, priorities going on outside of my fitness goals you know i'm really pumped like i said about what we're doing here with the group training um my goals right now honestly are more focused on new york muscle radio and bringing the listeners and bringing our audience and our clients just more content and just better things so i'm actually for once in a long time giving my fitness goals a little bit of a back seat and you know it's fine it's fine with me and not to say i'm not training or dieting or, or following anything i'm just not prioritizing it so I'm, I'm balancing it out a little bit right now and uh you know 
just the way life works. I, you know, prioritize one thing right now. And then in, uh, you know, maybe in a couple of months, priorities will be a bit different. Kind of fits into today's episode, you know, the taking, you know, how long does it take to actually lose muscle after a layoff? So what's the longest layoff you've ever taken? I mean, you're not taking a layoff right now, so but it kind of relates a little. Taking the a- longest time I ever took a, a layoff, but it wasn't even really a full layoff. Basically, the longest time I took a layoff um, was six weeks. And I trained lower body and I trained arms, but I couldn't do any shoulder pressing movements, you know, vertical pressing, horizontal or pulling. So I didn't do any delt work. I didn't do any chest work. I didn't do any back work. Um, I just did for arms. I did press down and some preacher curls, but then it was mainly only legs. And that was because I had rotator cuff tendonitis. And this was back when I was maybe, how old was I? 17 or 18 at the time. So it was a long time ago already. So we're talking about like nine or 10 years ago already. Um, But the doctor had told me, take six weeks off to let it heal. And I didn't know any better, so I just listened to the doctor. So I took six weeks off. I hate that, man, when they do that. Yeah, I can't stand that. I um, was told not to do anything for upper body, but I just had to do something for arms. So I figured, all right, (laughs) preacher curls, locked in position. There's going to be no stress on the rotator cuff unless I cheat. But I just did strict preacher curls, press downs, the same thing. Didn't aggravate the, the shoulder joint or anything like that. But the ironic part was I took those six weeks off, just like the doctor said. Pain was still exactly the same on week one, week six. So on week six, I said, screw it. Let me just start trying to rehab it myself. I literally rehabbed it in about two or three days. And when I say two or three days, I literally corrected the problem in about two or three days. Most frustrating time of my life because I took six weeks off to figure out, all right, I could have fixed it in about two or three days. Yeah, the longest I've ever taken off was about four weeks. Um no more than that. I've, I did it after a powerlifting meet. When was that? A year and a half ago? Something like that, right? I took a whole month off. Did you, you Did you not train at all? No. That month went by so fast. Like, I don't even remember. It really it, did. You know? That was weird, though. I took a whole month off. Yeah. yeah and, you I know, let, that's... I figured a... I'd let everything heal and just yeah. take time because I was really beat up. That was when I transitioned from an 83-kilo lifter to a 93-kilo lifter. And... Uh, I guess transitioning, I, I don't know if it was because I was so light and lean while I was competing. I just felt so beat up. So I just took all that. I took a month off and it worked. It, it served its purpose. That was for a purpose. Yeah. I mean, honestly, sometimes you just have to like it. Even if you're going to take a step back by taking time off, a lot of times that step back will lead you more steps forward in the end. You know what I mean? So in the short term, you're like, all right. I'm not making progress right now, but in the long term, you're going to make more progress. And that's not in every situation, but there's definitely some scenarios where, yeah, if you take that step back, you rest, you let your body recover, you're going to progress even further, you know, if you do it properly. So there's a time and place to do that. So layoffs, whether they're forced or, you know, you do them by choice, sometimes can actually be beneficial for sure. Yeah. That's why, again, we always talk about like, planning out your training and usually after a competition i usually take two weeks off completely yeah. you know i don't know if i'm gonna do it this time around i feel pretty good right now um i got three weeks left i know it's a lot of time but i got three weeks left and i feel good so i don't know if i'm gonna take exactly that much time off it depends it depends what happens if i qualify for the arnold i'm probably not gonna take any time off um we'll see um but I, i'm thinking that maybe usually about a two-week layoff is good yeah. it just allows everything to recover especially after a meet Although it is good to get in, the, you know it's so weird. It's like sometimes it goes. It's a catch twenty two yeah. because you have to take off to let everything heal. But sometimes the best recovery is actually moving. Not yeah. moving makes things worse. I mean, your shoulder, perfect example. You didn't do anything for six weeks, and it got worse. It didn't get right. better. It got worse. Right. You know, and then you started moving, and you decided to rehab it yourself, and you got better in three days. So it yeah. just goes to show. And I mean, I've I've done that too myself. My back could bother me at some points, um, and just taking time off just didn't help the situation. Actually training helps. Yeah. yeah. So it's like kind of productive, but again, sometimes things happen in life, man. Some people go away yeah. on vacation. Some people, you know, their honeymoon or whatever, they, maybe they just need time off of work or they're moving or something. And it's just got to take time off. So are you going to lose all your gains during that time? I mean, that's the question. I know for me, I hate taking off. Yeah. I hate that. We talked about this so many times, but sometimes in life you have to. Definitely. I mean, I mean, even if you're not talking about long layoffs, there'll be time in times in life where, you know, you'll have a week or so where it's just your training. Is, it's almost as if you had a week off because your training is just you're not going to be ideal for that week. And again, that can be considered almost in the same 
category is taking a layoff. Like right now, you're training really hard for nationals. Let's just say some type of scenario came up where now for a week, you just your whole schedule got flipped upside down and you might only be able to commit 15 or 20 minutes two or three times that week to training. You know, you still got in the gym, you still trained. But reality of it is, is that's almost considered like a week off for you. You know what I mean? So things happen yeah. in life. Um, and, you know, how many steps back are you actually going to take from that one week? Not necessarily a lot. Um, but like I said, a lot of times there's there's things that come up in life that just force you into it. And it's not always a bad thing because you got to look at it this way, too. Let's say that something came up right now and you couldn't train for a week. Yes, that would be really that would that would be really disadvantageous in the short term because, you know, you're training for a meet and you're really close to the meet, but you're getting that week of kind of a deload and a rest built into it. So you're getting a benefit, but you're getting, you know what I mean? There's a pro and a con to it too. In the long run, does it necessarily make a difference? It's going to, it's going to depend on the situation, but there is always a benefit in there somewhere. All right. So let's, let's get, get on with this. So I guess let's talk about muscle loss. So how does actually muscle actually go away? You know, everybody thinks like, oh, I stopped training and muscle's gone, but real muscle loss. And I'm going to preference that by saying quote unquote real muscle. So how do you build, let's back up again. How do you build? real muscle years and years mm -hmm. of hard training will build real muscles those you know if you just started working out and you worked out for six weeks and then you just stop for eight weeks you're not gonna you're not gonna keep right, right. that but real muscle something you know i would say if you've been training for over probably two three years at this point and you've built probably real muscle real muscle loss takes three to five yeah. weeks for you to really start to lose that muscle mass and again, keeping in mind your diet's good from the start. You know, that's yeah. one of the things you have to really keep in mind. Yeah, diet is going to be a huge component to actually maintaining, you know, and keeping those gains. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you're talking about real muscle, see, a lot of people don't understand that concept when we talk about real muscle because real muscle is something that takes time to build. You know, if you train hard for a couple of days or, or a week or maybe two weeks, your body's going to store more carbs. It's going to hold on to more water. If you took a measurement, you might see the measurements go up. But reality is that's not necessarily long-term solidified muscle gains. And, if, you know, you and I both know if you take one or two days where you don't hydrate yourself properly, you don't eat enough carbs, you're going to flatten out. You're going to get smaller. You're going to look – you're just going to not look as good. And that's not real muscle loss. You know, you could take somebody who looks great one day, starve them down, dehydrate them two or three days later they're going to look like they lost 10 15 pounds of muscle what happens when you just rehydrate refeed them they gain it all back so if you're talking about training and you're getting a similar effect from not training it's the same thing your body's going to compensate the second you get back into training okay provided that it's not long enough where you lost real muscle yeah so basically the longer the muscle was there for the harder it's yeah, going to be for definitely. it to vanish and one of the first things that happens is you actually lose muscle fullness first. I mean, we can get into the science yeah. behind this. Um, so basically, you know, as you train, your muscles use glycogen for energy. So glycogen is stored in your liver and stored in your muscles. So what starts to happen is as you train, your body is able to handle more and more glycogen inside the muscles. And what starts to happen is when you stop training, kind of that fullness inside the muscle, that need for your, your muscles to pull that glycogen in goes away. So you appear very like skinny. How do you describe flat over the over a podcast? Like very um, not tight. You guys know that feeling when your your muscles are tight against your skin and uh, uh, like turgor, like your muscle turgor is there. That's fullness. That kind of goes away, and you kind of lose that. That kind of explain flatness. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, when you explain flatness, yeah, I remember the first flat. time I heard it, I remember the first time I heard like, oh, you look flat. I had no idea what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people don't really notice it until you get really involved with this. And the, the bigger you are, the more you'll notice being flat. If you don't have a lot of muscle, you'll look very similar when you're flat versus when you're full. Somebody who yeah. has a ton of muscle, they're going to go through a big transition when they're flat and when they're full. Um, so anybody who has a lot of muscle will know more so than somebody who has less. But yeah, when you're full, I mean, I always like to think about your muscles. It's like, think about it like a, like a water balloon or, or just a balloon in general. When you're full, that muscle, that muscle or the balloon is fully inflated, fully stretched out. When you're flat, it's like it's deflated. You know, it's, it's still there. 
but it's not stretched out. It's not full the same way. So it's just got this inflated look to it. And again, that's because there's less mu- uh, less water, less carbs in that muscle, filling it out, stretching out the skin. Yeah, and that's going to give you kind of like a softer and less defined look. And that's going to message you mentally. You know, it's yeah. going to make you think like, oh, crap, there goes my gains. Gains lost. Yeah, and if you don't realize that that's what's going on, you're going to assume, wow, I actually lost the muscle. And as we mentioned before, obviously, if that's the case, you didn't lose actual muscle mass. Yeah, so new, initially what you actually lose is um, neurological. So when you work out, obviously, you stress out your your C- CNS, your central nervous system. Um, it gets very active when you exercise, and it remains kind of heightened for hours after an exercise. This is where you probably heard someone say, uh, I have CNS burnout. It basically means you're not recovering. And that usually takes about 10 days for your CNS to fully, fully recover. So when your CNS is active and elevated, um, it gives you that more harder, more toned kind of look. But again, if you're not activating your CNS, you're not training the muscles, the same thing, kind of, you know, you kind of flatten out. That same thing happens. But the first thing is, you, is usually uh, neurological. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, your body has so many different ways that it it compensates for the hard training, you know, the even the scene as burnout. And a lot of that is, like we said, you know, taking up more carbohydrates, taking up more, you know, taking up more water. And when you're, you're seeing us and your body's overstressed from hard training, even it's going to have a similar effect that it would have from not training because when you're not training your body's not going to take up those nutrients the same way but reality is when you actually overstress it your body's ability to take up those nutrients are compromised so you'll see a very similar effect when you overtrain too you can see it from somebody who's been training too hard they'll start to flatten out again the same way as if they stop training just because their body's ability to intake all those nutrients and put them into the muscles and to fill out like that, it's compromised. So there's a balancing act. You're going to get a similar result from doing too little or too much, actually. Yeah. So the first reason that you lose muscle is obviously your CNS becoming, you know, being more recovered um, and not being as active. Um, Second is obviously less glycogen and fluid inside the muscles. And actually the third reason why your muscles look a bit less defined um, and just not pumped is also because of inflammation. I mean, we forget that when we work out, we make inflammation in your body. You know, your muscles, you get a really tight pump. That's inflammation. So obviously, if you're not training, you're not getting inflamed. So you're not going to be as full. You're not going to appear as hard. It's not going to give you that same look. So that's actually inflammation. And obviously, taking that t- time off is going to lessen the inflammation, which, again, if you have an injury or something like that, bringing that inflammation down is actually important. Sometimes, right. you know, it's important to kind of take a step back in order to take steps forward. So Joe actually wrote here, he says, I'm getting depressed listening to you guys right now. This is all me. He actually suffered a shoulder injury and he's unable to get back to the gym. So for him, he's got to realize that his muscles aren't going to fall off by doing this, but he's actually going to fix his shoulder and get better and come back, you know, and be benching four or five plates, you know, when he comes back. Yeah. And it's exactly like I mentioned earlier too, in his case or in any case in general, you know, you take that step back, he's going to come back completely fresh, recovered and a hundred percent It's going to allow him to progress further and mm-hmm. faster too. So short-term step back, long-term, you're going to take more steps forward. Yeah. It's just, a, just like anything else. You got to take steps back in order to come yeah. forward, you know, but it, yeah. it's funny. I bet, I bet you didn't know that about the CNS that it takes 10 days. Did you know that? I didn't recover. know that exact number. So it's so you're saying it's ten days to fully recover. Yeah, that's from, what like the research kind of right. shows that it takes ten days, and it kind of makes it kind of makes. I sense. agree. I agree. I mean, if you had, if you had to throw it like an arbitrary number out there, I would say it would probably be somewhere from seven to ten days. But this is the thing, and this is why I hate like absolute numbers because people are going to hear that number, and you know, I don't know how the study was put together or what their actual conclusion was. But when they say ten days, hey, we did a whole podcast on the studies, right. man. So go back and listen to that. Yeah. When they say 10 days, that's going to depend on what exactly those people were doing that it took them 10 days to recover from. What you do might take more. Maybe it'll take less. What I I do, yeah. Yeah, everything is – there's all different variables thrown in there. So just to say 10 days, I wouldn't go by that. But, yeah, I mean when you just put it into context, you think, okay, I trained hard. I'm going to take a day off from the gym and let my CNS recover. That's not really what what's going to happen. You know, you're going to get rest for one day, but if you're in a, a you know a deep state of overreaching or overtraining, yeah, you're going to need longer. 
you know, 10 days a week even. I mean, that's I think that's where that general, okay, I'm going to take the week off came from. Remember that, man? We used to take those weeks off. How how often was that? Every six weeks weeks off. Yeah, they were mandatory, man. If you didn't do that, you lost everything. Yeah, you weren't making progress. That's actually funny, but the good, you know, and for me, we talked about this the other day, but I always felt when I came back rusty. So when I would take those weeks off, I'm like, I just feel like this thing puts me back. But I didn't know it wasn't actually now that I like I think about it, I, I was less hurt doing that too. Not that I'm hurt now, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think the potential for injury is a lot less. I think there is some points being valid taking actually time off like a week or two. Um, you know, especially if your training's been hard and you're training yeah. for something in particular. If you're just kind of training, uh, I just think that everything yeah. changes when you have a goal in mind. So if your goal is to do a powerlifting meet, let's just say, and I'm using that example for myself, obviously I'm going to push myself to a different level doing that. So it's a, I think it's necessary to take time off after mm-hmm. a competition. Whereas if you're just kind of training and doing what kind of Pete's doing right now, where he's just lot of lotting and dot his workouts, taking a week off is not going to do anything. No, absolutely not. And, you know, there's a reason that every sport at the top, every athlete at the top of the sport, whatever sport it is, has an off season. There's an off season. You know, mm-hmm. there's, you know, there's a time, there's an off season, then there's a time before they actually get into training where it's kind of like pre training, then they get into full blown training. And if this is a sport that competes or or an individual sport that the person competes every year, it's the same thing. You're going through cycles. You don't just train 100 percent year after year after year after year. You know, everybody knows this, you know, but then when you get into fitness, people are all just, you know, hardcore, hardcore mentality, grinding, you know, all (laughs) this shit. Inspiration. The most athletic people in the world that their sport relies on performance. It relies on recovery, everything, Mm -hmm. optimizing it. They have downtime built into their program, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's nobody on on the planet that's the best at their sport that just trains 365 days a year at 100% intensity. Just if you want to burn yourself out, get yourself injured and stop your career short, that's the, that's the, you know, that's the way to do it then. <laughs> if you want to have longevity and you want to continue progressing and get better, there's a time and place for downtime and, you know, more intense training cycles and less intense training cycles. So the purpose of this episode is to teach you guys how not to lose a lot of muscle when taking time off. So uh, let's, let's roll with this. So one of the things that screws people up with this is when they do take time off, usually when they take time off, it also goes hand in hand with taking time off the diet. Now that's that's critical, and that's where you're gonna pile on fat, and that's what that's what bad. That's not good. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're taking time off the gym, it's one thing, but if you're taking time off your diet, including that with the gym. Generally, what's gonna happen in that sense is ah, uh, you're not training. You're gonna feel sorry for yourself, kind of. You're gonna end up eating more, and then you're gonna put on body fat. So now your muscles are less full. Your CNS is recovered, your inflammation is down, but now you're gaining more fat from bad diet. So you got to be careful with that, and uh, you got to keep make sure that if you're going to take time off the gym, that your diet is still good. You're still eating a certain amount of protein a day. Um, you know, you could pull some calories. Actually, you know, if I am going to take time off nationals, I'm probably going to pull back my calories and kind of do like a mini cut for a couple of weeks while I do that. Do I risk losing some muscle doing that? Yes, but it's not something that, and we'll cover this later, that I can't recover from later on. Right. You want to, the key really is you want to keep as many other variables exactly the same, you know, because if you're taking training out of the equation now, you want to keep everything else as consistent as you can that you were doing before you took this mm-hmm. layoff or, or this forced layoff, let's say, um, because there's many variables that go into play when we're talking about building muscle or even losing it, you know? Sorry, my dog keeps jumping on my microphone. Um, So, you know, so even if you were training, people can lose muscle by continuing to train, but if they stop eating the right amount of protein, right amount of calories, if they diet too hard, you can still lose muscle, but you're still training. So you can even take nutrition by itself and put that out of the equate, take that out of the equation and you can isolate that and say that's the cause of it. So if you stop training and then your nutrition sucks on top of it, you're going to lose muscle from two things going on or you're going to have two things that you're doing that could lead to muscle loss. So it's important to keep every other variable in the equation that you can. Exactly. So this will lead me to my next point, which is what to do to minimize muscle loss during a layoff. Um, a huge one for me is still getting in your BCAAs. I think for me that that's the key. I mean, aside from diet, you know, you're not doing anything else, obviously, but BCAA use 100% 
needed. Again, BCAAs, I, I believe they're one of the best things when it comes to muscle building. You know, when your body breaks down muscle tissue, it breaks it down into BCAAs. So when we take them, we trick our body into thinking that it broke down enough muscle. So BCAAs also contain a lo- enough leucine to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, which will build muscle. So if you're taking BCAAs, you're kind of going to trick your body into thinking that it doesn't need to break down any muscle. Yeah, I mean, if you could get if you could get your nutrition on point, then you're you're not gonna have a problem with it, really. You know, it, it's it's yeah. all about like I, like I keep saying, you you want to keep that variable the same, because again, you know, if if you take somebody even that doesn't weight train and you feed them enough protein, and they weren't eating enough protein before, their body's naturally gonna put on a bit more muscle. It's just it's just the way the body works. You know, if you had a protein deficiency and you can take more protein, your body's gonna build more muscle. So mm-hmm. again. If you keep that high, you're going to keep your body, you know, in a state where it's going to have more muscle, keep more muscle on its frame. The second you start taking that away, watch what happens, you know. So if you combine that with not training, you're it's a recipe for disaster, that's for sure. I mean, if that's your goal, like if somebody came to me and said, listen, I want to lose muscle, I'd say, all right, do two things right now. Stop eating protein and stop training. Watch I actually how fast had a you'll client lose. that came to me that said they wanted to lose muscle. <laughs> this is a male or female? A male, but he he was he was bulky and big, but he just for some reason he wanted to be like he wa- <laughs> he had good genetics actually he gained a lot of muscle quickly, but he just wanted to look like he wanted to wear the skate jeans, man. That's what he wanted. That was his goal. That was one of my hardest clients. I gotta be honest. <laughs> Did you tell him to stop <laughs> to stop eating protein and to stop training? I kept his protein a little high. I just kept his calories low. I made him do a lot of cardio. No legs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it worked to the best. I, I don't really know how to lose muscle. I, this never was my goal, but some everybody's goal is different, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. He obviously wanted to lose body fat too, but it just he right, didn't want right. to be bulky anymore. He just wanted to lose everything. Yeah, he wanted to get in skinny jeans. That was his goal. I mean, he wasn't that that heavy, but he wanted to get in skinny jeans. He had a muscular body and just wanted to get in skinny <laughs> That's jeans. That's never been a goal of mine ever. To lose muscle. And maybe it's, it's sometimes the opposite of what you want to do. The opposite happens. So maybe if you say your goal is to lose muscle, you'll gain more. Yeah. yeah. You never know, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things, too, that I want to co- cover here, and I guess this is more for injury prevention and just injuries in general. So most of the time when you have to take a layoff, it's because of an injury. Um, you know, sometimes people get hurt and they always, I don't want to lose muscle. And rightfully so. You know, we talked about Joe with his shoulder. Uh, that's something that, of course, you know, he doesn't want to lose any muscle, doesn't want to lose any progress. But, again, we talked about taking a step back in order to come forward. But I also think that when you have to take time off for an injury, you have to take time off. So here's a perfect example. Rebecca says, um, I sprained my wrist and have recovered to about 80%. I've been resting it to heal. Should I lift light before I'm fully recovered or rest more? I tried hitting bench sets of 20 with only 100 pounds, but it still hurts some. So it just goes to show you that sometimes your body's not ready to get back and you're just going to have to work around certain injuries. I mean, we're not doctors or physical therapists in order to give you that type of an answer for that. But, you know, just based on what we're trying to talk about here, obviously you're trying to get back into the gym so you can get back and get your old physique back. But if you just focus on your diet and focus on maybe doing some cardio and just staying quote unquote active, you'll bounce back a lot quicker. Because I definitely do think that you do have to exercise, especially when you have an injury. Um, again, this, that's something that a physical therapist could tell you exactly for you, what, you know, and then in your case, your wrist, what you're going to have to do, but you have to take that time off that's necessary and that'll help you minimize more muscle because remember muscle loss. Remember if you're hurt right now, right? Your wrist is bothering you. can't lift anything, but you're trying to rush back. You're going to, that wrist is still going to be hurt and it's going to take even longer to heal. So if you want to minimize muscle loss during an injury, you have to take the time to let it heal. Don't rush yeah. back. Definitely, definitely. You know, and, and it's you know the body. It's a funny thing because, like I said, you need that time off. And if you don't take that time off, your, your body, body will, will you force yeah. force you to take that yeah. time off. You know, so again, you want to avoid those injuries. So you may as well take the time off when needed, or take deloads, or structure your training so that there is downtime in there, time for rest, time for recovery. Because if not, you're going to get to that point where your body is just going to say, "Listen." You don't want to give me rest. Now you're going to have to take rest, you know, and so it's going to balance out either way. And the key is always to try to stay as healthy as possible. So if you can stay healthy, take that downtime when you need to take it, prevent injury, 
you're gonna make you're gonna progress much faster that way than if you keep pushing it till the point where you get injured. Then you have a long setback, and then you got to get back on the horse and just start going again. Yep. All right. So how do you bounce back to where you were? So now you're back from your layoff, whatever it was for your injury. You were on vacation. Uh, you just felt like taking time off. How do you bounce back? How do you get back quickly? Now, the one of the things here is, and I'm sure everyone here has heard this before, muscle memory. Everybody likes to throw that term around. Oh, muscle has memory. Um, it actually does, and you will get get back all your gains at a much faster rate than what they came. So let's just say for argument's sake, we'll use Pete as an example. We'll make this very cut and dry. Pete is 190 pounds, let's just say, and he decides to stop training. Ends up at 160. Let's just say, for argument's sake, he lost 30 pounds of muscle, right? He got that to 160. I'm exaggerating the scenario, but you guys get the idea. So now he's 160. He decides to go back in the gym and start training again. So now he starts training. It's going to take him, he could probably get back to 190 in a couple of weeks because his body was already there. You mm-hmm. know, so that's something that you have to keep in mind too. You don't have to worry about, I got to sneeze. <laughs> um, that's something that you uh, you don't have to worry about, but you'll bounce back quicker. So let's say it, t- it took Pete four years to get from 160 to 190. He, he'll realistically get back to that, that quote-unquote weight and put that muscle back on within a couple of weeks. Yeah. And, I mean, I actually have a sim- similar actual story too. Um, I, I don't know what year it was. I took about three years off, legitimate three years off from training legs. Or, yeah, actually completely training legs. I just took three years off training legs. Um, at the time. Yeah, thank you, Joe, for the bless you. He's the only one that said bless you. Look, Pete didn't even give a fuck. No, no, we got to move on with the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fuck, for that. fuck your sneeze. So at the time prior to that, I was probably training a good, man, let's say, seven, seven or eight years, right? And I built up to, I was squatting about four plates as my max, let's say, before I took this time off, right? I took three years off from training legs, completely three years off. When I came back to squatting again after three <laughs> years off. Joe literally- said, wait, hold, on, hold on, Joe said, Pete's so rude. He just wanted you to keep mentioning that he gained 30 pounds of muscle. <laughs> yeah, let's just, let's just keep it moving. <laughs> so three years took time off from squatting. Took time off from training legs. The first workout I came back in, I was squatting three plates. I was repping it, about five, six reps. So I went from 405 to 315 in three years. Not really that bad considering. I trained legs maybe about two or three months in. I was back up to like 365, 375 or so. And then I probably hit you know, back up to the four plates within six, six months or so. So it took me about six years. But that's training the vegetarian way also. Well, either way, I mean, I consider if you take six years to build up to something, take three years off, then get back there in six months. It just shows you how much faster it'll come back. You know, I took three years off, didn't touch a squat bar, didn't squat, didn't get under a squat bar. In six months, I built it back up. So I'll explain why this happens. I'm going to try to do this. Without being so science I'm going to try to explain this no-fluff style to you guys. So basically, when you train hard, when you train New York Muscle Radio way, you use a program like NewYorkMuscleRadio.com says Get Jacked, the free 12-week training program, or one of our signature products. Um, when you train hard like that, your body, uh, wh- while it's building a muscle fibers, it, it's also getting extra nuclei or more cells within the muscle fibers. So this is how the cells grow. Now, in addition to the nuclei, you're going to have little cells around that called satellite cells. So what happens is those satellite cells around the nuclei get bigger. Okay, so as we train, they get bigger and they grow, and that's what regulates the size. So what starts to happen when you take time off, the satellite cells around that nuclei shrink and they get smaller. But the nuclei never actually goes away. So the nuclei was built with hard training. So the harder we train, the more nuclei is built, the more satellite cells are in there. So, again, like I said, those satellite cells shrink, but the nuclei never goes away. So once you start picking up the weights again, those satellite cells begin to grow again, and that's what will put back the size. Did I explain that without yeah. being too scientific? Yeah, and I mean, you know, just to put it in simple terms. All right, go ahead, Pete. You, 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 you talk know. now. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. 
You asked if you put it in simple terms. You want yeah, me to you, explain you, it you in simple the terms? You didn't, I explained it in simple terms. I was asking if I explained it well. No, no, no. Like, no. Ah, fuck you away, man. Let me explain my way. Right now, they're like, what the hell did he just say? A satellite cell? Like, did, did, did the cable or dish network come on my roof today? What are these satellite cells? Um, no, but basically, yeah. <laughs> Tom says, uh, you explained more more than my biology professor in the last minute than he has in the last seven classes. <laughs> Good. Go ahead, Pete. The, light, the light's back on you, man. Go ahead. Now you get a little, little offensive. Go ahead, buddy. So, so go, I, Pete. I don't get, I don't get offensive. No, go, 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 Pete. Come on. Yeah. Everyone wants to hear how, how smart you are. Go ahead, man. I'm not, I'm not sounding smart. I'm just, I'm explaining it in simple <laughs> I'm terms. You're the, smart. You're the one talking smart, talking man. about satellite cells and nuclei and you that's, know. That's that's what it is, though. Yeah, but in layman's terms, if you train hard for six years and you take three years off, you're not going to lose everything. Believe it or not, you're going to take a step back. But believe it or not, if you train that hard for that long, if you take time off, you're going to still be strong. You're still going to have muscle. If you didn't train hard, yeah, you're going to lose all of it. But that's the difference between training hard, building real muscle, and you know, just kind of going to the gym and going through emotions. Yeah, James says that was explained very well. Thank you, James. I appreciate that, buddy. And that was a good explanation, Pete Jutes. I'll, I'll give you a little round of applause, man. I don't need a round of applause. I'm just just helping helping out, man. Um, so that's that. I think that we covered it. Did we miss anything, man? Do you think we missed anything with taking layoffs and muscle loss and how to recover from that? Do we miss anything? No, I don't think we missed anything. Just you know, I think that people need to fear taking layoffs less. You know, or taking time off from the gym and recovering, getting back into it. Because again, when you're talking about a long term thing, most people that are in fitness are in it for the long haul. Me and Anthony have been doing this. I don't even know how long anymore. I stopped counting years. Um, if we had to take, yeah, know, if we true. literally had to take six months off right now. That would sound like a long period of time. But if you look at it on the complete, like, you know, it's like a blip on the radar for the last 16 years or whatever it is, you know, six months. What's that going to be? I don't even know what that would mean. You know, it's, it's a like, long time, dude. It's like nothing. So, you know, during those six months, yeah, you're going to feel like, um, you know. Shit. Yeah. You ever seen that meme with uh, Christian Bale from The Machinist? No. Nah. Go look it up. <laughs> when it, what I feel like when I skip the gym, if you ever seen The Machinist, he starved himself for that movie. He was like a, he was like 85 pounds or something. <laughs> but um, that, you know what I mean? That's what it's going to feel like. But in reality, like I said, if you take the big picture and you look at it, wow, I've been training for 10 years. I've had to take six months off. What's going to happen? You know, let alone, you know, people freak out over having to take two weeks off. And, you know, one thing that I want to say before we sign off here. A lot of people, um, you know, they worry about muscle loss and taking time off because they take a day or two off here. I think that a lot of people aren't as dedicated as they think they are. Um, you know, consistency really will build quality, quality muscle. Uh, and being consistent with your training and just not trying really your hardest not to miss days. You know, I can't even, you know, a lot of people have come, oh, I can't make it to the gym. I can only make it three times this week. But, you know, there's so many hours in a day, and I know things come up all the time, but it's your job to get it done. I think a lot of people, uh, there's a difference between taking a layoff and missing. Totally different things there. So if you have to take a layoff for whatever reason, that's for, you know, whatever, that's fine. But you got to be as consistent as possible when you're on, I guess is my point. Yeah, absolutely. You got to be consistent with your training. You got to make sure that you build that base so you have all that. So if you do happen to ever have to take time off, you'll bounce back really quickly. And that's the goal is to bounce back quickly, especially if you're taking off for, uh, let's say like vacation. If you're taking time off for vacation, make sure you enjoy yourself, rest. And maybe instead of the time that you would spend in the gym, do something that you normally wouldn't do. You know, keep your mind active if you're if you're just taking time off the gym. Like if I took two weeks off the gym, um, you know, what do I do different? I mean, maybe I'll, I'll go for an actual walk with the dogs or I'll go and do something with my daughter that I normally wouldn't do during that time. You know, use that time productively. Don't just uh, sit around and wait to go back to the gym, you know? I used to hate that week off, though. I, I was like, oh, I don't know what the hell to do with myself. I was so bored. Yeah, because when you do it like that, it's kind of just meaningless. There's really no purpose behind it. It's like, all right, this week I take a week off and rest, you know? And it's just like if it's not falling in line with your training, there's no reason to do it. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm going to summarize this up for you guys so you guys have an idea of what to do if – you do take a layoff, how not to lose muscle, and how to bounce back. So 
Remember, real muscle loss, real muscle that was built will take anywhere between three to five weeks with a good diet to actually start losing muscle. You'll lose muscle fullness first. And again, the longer the muscle was there, the harder it is for it to just vanish. Make sure that while the time off, you keep your diet in check, making sure you're getting in enough protein, making sure you're consuming BCAAs as those will help retain as much muscle as possible. And uh, you're going to bounce back just as quickly, so don't worry about it too much. Just make sure when you do go back, you kind of progress with your training too. That's one thing that we should have covered also. Don't just jump right back into the old training you did. So if you were training six days a week really hard and heavy and you took a month off, you can't just jump back into that. Slowly build yourself up. If you were training six days a week, start with three and then the next week add four and add sets and add reps. Don't be afraid to kind of build yourself back up. You'll gain so much faster that way and your body will be able to adapt a lot better also. Whereas if you just threw yourself into it, your body's never going to adapt from that and you're going to experience CNS burnout a lot faster that way. So again, make sure that you're doing everything with progression and that's it. That's how you, if you have to take a layoff, that's how you won't lose muscle. That's how you'll get it back just as quick. Yeah, agreed. All right, man. You guys, check out that program, newyorkmuscleradio.com slash transformations. Again, be sure to sign up for that because that ends, what date, big guy? October 1st, all the entries have to be in. And that's the last day. Like if you get it to us on October 1st, late late in the evening you you know you risk even getting on on time so that's the absolute last day the signups are going to close so get it in by october 1st but if you're smart get it in earlier because you'll do us a huge favor and everything will be smooth yep all right man your turn all right guys pete and anthony new york muscle radio and we're out